Imperialism, as Lenin described it, is the highest stage of capitalism. The outline of imperialism is, as one can infer, the expansion of empire, along with the control of natural resources and land with complete disregard for human life and the environment. These hyper-capitalistic practices are often shrouded from the general public, and if they are exposed to the people, they are painted in a positive light, as the spread of quote-unquote freedom and democracy. Much to the dismay of those engaging in imperialism, there are those who have written against it, those who have detailed the horror that comes as a result of imperialist efforts. Heart of Darkness, a detailing of the exploration and usurping of the Belgian Congo by one Joseph Conrad, serves as a lens into the reality of imperialism. A brief summary goes as follows. From the perspective of a fictionalized Conrad referred to as Charles Marlowe, we see an expedition through the Belgian Congo to find a highly influential and successful explorer of the area known as Mr. Kurtz. Upon this search, Marlowe is regaled with stories of Mr. Kurtz's greatness, he sees the conditions of the Congo, and what the Congolese people had been subjected to. Upon finding Kurtz, the man in question soon after died, his last words being the now iconic, the horror. The phenomena that is imperialism, while some quasi-imperialism has occurred in past societies, was a predominantly European practice upon its debut. European imperialism, along with those who follow suit, has always had a chauvinistic nature to it, adding a highly nationalistic, often white supremacist character to their practices. In most cases, these often end up a situation in which the rich white imperialists heavily exploit, antagonize, and abuse the population of wherever they may be invading. From the eyes of Marlowe, the reader is given a first-hand look at these white chauvinist procedures in action. In the Belgian Congo, Marlowe witnesses the conditions subjected to the Congolese people. Early in the first section, Marlowe bears witness to a chain gang of Congolese. He details the dehumanization and the harsh mistreatment of his fellow man. The concept of the conqueror and the conquered takes on a whole new dynamic in this practice, with the emphasis of race and the dehumanization of the African people for the sake of a profit. Racial chauvinism proves to be a defining trait of the highest stage of capitalism. In seeing these inhumane practices, Marlowe acts in disgust and attempts to distance himself from the yoke of imperialism to no avail. Heart of Darkness is beyond that of a simple novella. Through dramatized events, this book serves as a genuine description of imperialism in practice. The African Congo did not officially become the Belgian Congo until the introduction of one King Leopold II. The example of Leopold is one of the earliest examples of how one man's power can shake the entire world. One of the pioneers of modern-day imperialism, Leopold II of Belgium instituted what was basically an organized genocide down in the Congo. As a strong monarch, Leopold's power went unchallenged in the African nation, which gave room for imperialist brutality to expand and bring a greater detriment to the Congolese people. Forced labor, starvation, and general physical brutality were common practices for the sake of Belgian profit and Leopold's own personal capital gains. King Leopold's racially driven, chauvinistic, imperialist actions are a sentiment to the issue of power. The power of a select few, from Leopold's time onward, have proven to have potential to bring a great level of detriment to those on the bottom of the pedestal. The highest stage of capitalism seeks nothing but power, the expansion of empire, and control. What happened in the Belgian Congo was not an isolated incident. Early statistics for these graphically violent expansionist policies give broader insight to the practices described by Charles Marlowe's perspective. Whereas Leopold's Belgium had a population of over 8 million, the population of those they have conquered is approximately 0.5 times higher. Furthermore, imperialism further perpetuates the control of a select few in the amount of land that is controlled by imperialist forces. The right of nations to self-determination is completely ignored, thrown out the window, and left to rot. In order to maintain a majority control over the land and resources of the impoverished, disenfranchised people of these occupied nations, imperialist forces take as much as they can grab. Further statistics from the turn of the 20th century display that 90% of the African continent was under control from an outer force. Despite the brutality of Leopold and similar regime's decisions, despite the brutal depiction of Joseph Conrad's journey through the Belgian Congo, imperialism is still alive and well in the modern age. Imperialism has evolved beyond simply taking land and resources from a foreign entity, albeit the backbone of imperialist conquest. 
For years, there have been efforts to destabilize the Syrian government, with the likes of Israel and the United States funding terrorist groups such as the White Helmets to stage chemical attacks as a means of quote-unquote justifying plunging the Syrian Arab Republic into further chaos and conflict. The imperialism laid out by Heart of Darkness is not a new imperialism. It's exactly what imperialism was designed to be. It has simply been modernized. A force for global domination by any means necessary, regardless of who has to die, starve, be maimed, or generally suffer. Usurping the natural resources and the establishing of forced labor is not freedom and democracy. The practices detailed in Heart of Darkness in the history of both European and American foreign policy are the path to the total destruction of the Earth. The premise of infinite growth as laid out by modern neoliberal imperialism is a contradiction, as infinite growth cannot happen when resources are finite. Leopold's extreme exploitation acts as a precursor for this highly contradictory practice of capital accumulation. Joseph Conrad in his writing is attempting to display the hidden horrors that come with this morally deprived expansion, however, the success of this warning leaves much to be desired.